Indeed, in the past week, the inevitable impact of the coronavi coronavirus on the sports industry has landed with a stunning blow. Built on live competition where large crowds come together to watch, professional and collegiate sports leagues around the globe in cascading effect have cancelled, suspended or postponed ongoing or imminent seasons. In the long longer term, summer events like the UEFA Euro 2020 is already in jeopardy as it has been postponed till 2021. Now, with these fast-breaking developments mirroring the exponential spread of the coronavirus, it is essential that stakeholders in the sport and entertainment industry understand the various legal issues associated with the outbreak of this pandemic. Now, major sporting events, Steve, has been postponed all across the world. But I'm sure, because recently I read something about the English Premier League, that uh, if they don't get to complete the league season at a certain period, they will have to pay a fine. And I'm wondering, is it that the people who wanted to collect this fine from the English Premier League don't they know about the outbreak of the coronavirus? Why do they still have to go ahead to take a fine from these um, football bodies? But of course, the show must go on. What must be, must be. But there can be adjustments to all these things. But why? Let, let's see the legal implication of what this coronavirus has done to the world of sports. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, there's something we call uh, Pacta Sun Savanda. Pacta Sun Savanda is a concept okay. in contract law. What it simply means is that um, uh, each party must perform their respective obligations, contractual obligations, when they sign a contract. Now, what is the contract between the broadcasters and the Premier League? The contract is that um, the games must be played and that these games must be on TV. Mm. Now, a component of that agreement is also the fans, attendance at match mm. venues. So, like you said, nobody foresaw this kind of um, uh, event that has had the whole world reeling from the shock mm -hmm. for the past few weeks or thereabouts when the whole event started manifesting in England. Now, what are the remedies to both clubs? And both the clubs and the broadcast sponsors. Now, the broadcast sponsors have paid about 4.9 billion uh, uh, pounds, pounds yeah. for four years. Now, the breakdown is that they pay over 1 billion pounds every season. Yeah. Now, they pay upfront. And these monies, because there's a collective broadcast agreement between the clubs and the Premier League, mm. these monies are disbursed to each of the Premier League teams. And these monies have been shared since August, yes. when the league kicked off. Wow. Yeah. Now, what do you want the broadcasters to do? They also have a contract by the side with the viewers who have subscribed to watch these games. Mm -hmm. What are they going to tell them? Recently, they came out with uh, a publication saying that, okay, that everybody, every subscriber to sports and uh, Sky Sports and BT Sports should have their subscription uh, freezed or frozen, sorry. Uh, for the period of this pandemic. Mm. Now, at no cost. So what it simply means is that BT Sports, the broadcasters are going to bear the cost of this freezing of wow. their subscription. So who is going to reimburse them? So these are the questions. So, and I'm sure they must have sought legal advice from their lawyers on the options. Now, there's something you call uh, force measure clauses. I go out and people say, oh, force measure would apply. Force measure simply means, is a French word, simply means that um, with greater force. Mm. So what it simply means is, uh, is a doctrine that enables contracting parties to excuse or suspend performance of their obligations in a contract. Mm. So um, using the Premier League and the broadcasters, for example, for instance, so you look at the contract between them. What the law stipulates is that they must expressly include that clause in their contract. Yeah. Is there a force majeure clause in the broadcast deal signed between BT Sports and Sky Sports on the one hand and the Premier League? We are not privy to such information. But even if there was a force majeure clause, did it include a pandemic? Did it mm. include a quarantine order from the government? Now, there's a heavy... Um, clamp down on public gatherings and yeah. um, uh, public contacts. So people are taking shelter in their respective houses. Those who are infected have been taken to the various diagnostic units yeah. where they are treating them. Mm -hmm. So you now ask yourself, can the game still go on? Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Now, for first major to apply, first of all, there must be actual impossibility of performance, not onerous difficulty mm -hmm. of performance. So if, I, if the Premier League clubs are saying, oh, it will be difficult for us to go to the stadium. Now, <laughs> you have how many, how many teams? On the minimum, you have about 24 teams yeah. in your first team. So, and if there's nobody infected, why shouldn't you play the match? Play the match. You can play behind closed doors. We mm -hmm. saw that with UEFA. UEFA, UEFA played yeah. some of the matches, even the Syria A, before the clamp down came yeah. down from, came from the government and stopped them in their tracks. Mm -hmm. When players started getting infected and everything. So, is there, is there really um, a substitution? Because there's a, there's, a, there's a requirement that requires you, um, there's a provision for first measure that requires the person who is trying to take advantage of first measure to mitigate the damages mm. or make substitutions. So if you don't make substitutions, now there was also an alternative about um, going to play in the Midlands. Talk about Birmingham, yeah. Aston Villa, and Wolverhampton. Yeah. So these, these areas are largely uh, safer areas when it comes to um, the yeah. pandemic in yes. England. So why haven't they considered this option? I'm sure that is what will be at the back of the minds of BT Sport and Sky Sports, mm -hmm. that these people have alternatives. They have alternatives to finish the game. We don't care how you do it, but our games must be on TV and you must complete the league. Yeah. And if you don't complete the league, you have to pay us this money. Yeah. So in simple terms, the Premier League and the, and the teams, the constituent teams, can only rely on first major if, if what we are experiencing right now is contemplated. And they have to issue notice, they will issue notice to BT Sport and Sky Sports, uh, expressly telling them why they cannot perform the contract. So it's only then that they will be able to take advantage of it and they must take reasonable and diligent, um, uh, explore reasonable and diligent alternatives yeah. to see whether they can mitigate the damages because BT and Sky Sports, they are losing a lot of money. True. So we cannot say that uh, with regards to our domestic league, yeah, because we don't have, have a broadcast. So, so. <laughs> uh, forget about the, um, the, the exuberant TV. announcement mm. that was made in November saying that there's, a, there's an agreement with Next TV. There's nothing like that. So yes. they are not stepping on anybody's toes. So yes. they shouldn't be losing sleep over this kind of issues <laughs> no. right now. No. So, uh, but then uh, it will be very interesting to see uh, what will happen in the coming days because. Um, now the league has been pushed to April 30th. Yeah. Now what happens when you get to April 30th and <laughs> there's nothing on the show? No. Then you, know, you also look at the individual player contracts. Exactly. What happens to the manager's contracts? Because I was going to I was going to ask about I was going to ask about that. Now you, we, we say um, you, you said something about difficulty yes. or an impossibility yes. of playing, but this pandemic looks like an it has made it impossible to play football. And as much as we have a couple of players, more than 20 players who can um, feature in a football match, 11 players on the football pitch, then the accurate number of substitutions. But you and I know this is almost an impossible mission because the coronavirus, the rate at which it's spreading, even some of these players have contracted the virus. Arsenal head coach Mikel Arteta yeah. was the first to be announced in England. So what is um, the possibility or impossibility of other players contracting when they get on the football pitch? They will get to touch themselves we see a lot of players spitting on the football pitch. It's a contact sport. Yes. So the best way to do this is to avoid anything football for now, anything sports for now. So I feel like in the contract, these other parties should understand that this is a situation on ground. There's nothing we can do about it. I also heard that um, the FA is planning to make sure that they finish the league on or before the 30th of June than the transfer market because most of these players, like you talk about player contracts, most of their contracts would right. run down yeah. by the 30th of June. Correct. Then on the 1st of July, probably they sign a new contract or they let them go, the transfer window opens and all that. But one thing is for sure, there's going to be topsy-turvy in the world of sports, especially the transfer window and how the league will end. There was also a rumor that I don't want to agree with to null and void the English Premier League, yes. meaning that yes. if that happens, Liverpool will not be announced as the winners of the, uh, the, uh, the EPL. Yes. So it's crisis left, right and centre. And I think the best way to do this is all parties should sit down at the round table and say, OK, nobody knows when this whole coronavirus thing will be wiped out of the whole world. So let's hold on for now. Prevention, they say, is better than cure. Forget about the game for now. 
Okay, uh, I agree with you. Mm. Uh, life should come first. Definitely. But like I said from the outset, um, humongous investments have been made by these broadcasters. I agree. So now, what the law? The law wouldn't require performance, strict performance by the teams. Mm. That okay, by insisting that okay, you should go and play the games regardless of the difficulty. What BT Sports and Sky Sports are saying is simply. Give me back my money. <laughs> How can that be difficult? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, incidentally, um, even in 2008, when we had the global financial uh, downturn, mm. the courts have held severally that uh, when it comes to payment of money, mm. that you cannot, you cannot rely on such events as by saying no, that you cannot pay your money, you not be able to pay money. What the law requires is if you cannot perform, Quantify what you are going to do in damages and pay me back my money. That's simply what BT Sports and Sky Sports are saying. Mm. You can't invest one over a billion dollar, pounds and then expect me to go to sleep and say, okay, yes, because the game cannot go on, everybody should go. Mm. So we should also play the devil's advocate for a while. Permit me if I'm holding brief for the broadcast sponsors. Mm. But that is a, whole, a lot of money for anybody to, yes. to, to forego. So that's it. Well, you know, bringing it back home, the Minister of Youth and Sports, Sunday Diary, has taxed journalists to exercise the necessary precaution in the discharge of their duty. And while Mr. Diary was speaking uh, at a federal prayer of a recently deceased journalist, Abdul Wahab Badamosi, at the Nigerian Union of Journalist Secretariat in Abuja, he says newsmen must make their health a priority in order to avoid health-related complications. Let's listen to uh, the Minister for Youth and Sports. My advice is that as core professionals, particularly journalists who also go into public relations, we should take our health seriously, uh, knowing fully well that, as they say, health is wealth, and that uh, whatever happens, at the end of it all, we must be ready to also go, but we should try to live life to the fullest. COVID-19 is here with us, and um, as um, journalists in the forefront of reporting this minute, while others are running away, Alongside them, health workers, we are the ones in the forefront. You must not become the news. You must take all necessary precaution as a journalist to protect yourself and ensure that you stay safe. Basically, our colleagues should take their health seriously. We have organized them health outreaches here in the FCT that people didn't take advantage of. We've done hepatitis tests, we've done general tests, we've done about five health outreaches. So people, journalists, my colleagues, should take their health seriously. You must stay alive to report the news. Don't become the news. Well, yes, uh, the minister right there is talking about uh, health, uh, um, the journalists making sure that they stay healthy and all that. The same thing applies to the world of sports. We know that the Nigerian Professional Football League has been put on hold in, uh, eventually because of the whole outbreak of the coronavirus. And yes, uh, like um, Steve rightly mentioned, um, there's nothing to worry about when it comes to the broadcast deal. The question is, do we even have a broadcast deal with any broadcasting outfit? Um, the big answer uh, for me, I would say no, because Next TV, we've not even seen anything from them yet. Now, it's all about the whole breakout of the coronavirus. Um, the EPL is on hold. The, uh, the Spanish La Liga is on hold. The Italian Serie everything is on hold. But now, the organizers of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics are saying that we have about 124 days to go to the event, and they're saying that the tournament will go on as planned. I mean, if the tournament is postponed, is there any major blow that it will cause in the world of sports financially? Um, you see, okay, so when you're looking at most of this event, the first thing that comes to mind is the sponsors of this event. Yeah. So usually a lot of people have put in a lot of money mm. to make sure that the, uh, the event is successful. So I would assume that the reason why they are saying the event will go on as planned is because they are considering the implications on the, the, the legal implications on the contracts that they already have with mm. some of the sponsors. True. So obviously the organizers of the event, if they are not able to fulfill their own obligations for the, I mean, if they are not able to fulfill their obligations on their own part, then, you know, the the sponsors will bring up legal, legal actions against them to ensure that they either fulfill the obligation or, you know, pay them back the money that they have invested in mm. the event. So, I mean, putting that their decision against what is going on right now in, in, the, in, the, in, the, world, in, the, in the world at large. The pandemic, um, 
it's not safe health-wise. I, I mean, we are hoping that by that time, the, they would have found a cure or probably the spread of the virus would have reduced, yeah. so everybody will be safe. So, but, so if you look at it, that's, that's sometime in, that's about three or four months from now. Mm. So we're hoping that by that time, things would have been right. But if by that time, things are not right, um, that would also be putting the, the, the workers or putting the, the players in the, in the, uh, the I'm, Olympics. I'm trying to, no, not, not necessarily, yeah, the players, I'm talking about the players. Yeah. That's also going to, yes, the athletes, yes, thank you. Athletes. That's going to put them at risk. Sure. So you're forcing athletes to play in basically an uh, unconducive environment mm -hmm. because they are, they, are, they are prone to the risk of contracting the virus, the virus if they have not found a cure or if it's still spreading as it is right now. So they'll be, they are, they're, trying to, they're trying to save themselves from this particular financial obligation from the sponsors. Mm -hmm. But they'll probably be also looking at legal actions from also the athletes mm -hmm. because you are going to be forcing them to to play in unconditional environment. So, but you know, let's let's just. I, I believe mm. that we should just wait it out. Uh, again, it out. again, yeah. it goes to the legal implications. Oh. All right. Um, I've heard a number of the athletes fighting and saying that oh, we are not going to honor the um, summer 2020 Olympics. Yes. Our health should be paramount. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other hand, uh, you have the Japanese government who has probably expended billions of dollars building stadia, providing the facilities to make sure that the tournament goes on. Perhaps that explains why um, everybody is trying to shy away from the reality that, oh, mm -hmm. this cannot be possible. So they are probably looking at the time, timeline and saying, OK, in the next two, three months, a lot of yeah, things might have changed. Change. We'll come back come back to it and then we'll get it done. But what about the athletes? Many of the athletes, um, they, they have they even have contracts mm -hmm. with their own sponsors, personal sponsors, sure. endorsement deals and everything. Who wouldn't want you to fall ill? Mm -hmm. Somebody like uh, Roger Federer, for example, who has a, an image rights contract with uh, Rolex. Mm -hmm. If Federer goes to honor the um, summer 2020 Olympics and contract coronavirus, God forbid, and what happens to his contract with Rolex? Mm. Rolex will probably sue him for inducement of breach of contract. Mm -hmm. yes. So these are the collateral damages that one needs to actually um, mitigate. They will have to come to a middle ground and probably do what uh, UEFA has done with Euro 2020 uh, by mm -hmm. pushing it forward. So because it cannot, it must hold in the summer. There's no point pushing it to September. September, you are getting to winter. So mm -hmm. there's no point pushing it then. So what do you do? Probably count your losses and push it to 2021. So wow. that's that's probably the only thing, so that you don't expose people because you also have an obligation to protect their health, to to uh, make sure that their health and safety is guaranteed. So if you cannot guarantee the health and safety of these athletes, what are you doing as a body? That that, that question should actually be left for the IOC. Mm -hmm. So Very true. so that is it. Now let's let's take it down to Turkey now and talk about um, John Michael Obi, still based on the legal implication of things happening concerning the, in connection with the coronavirus. Mikhail came out and said to the Turkish Football Association that it is wrong for us to play under this unconducive condition. Why can't the league be postponed the same way other leagues have been postponed across the world? And um, he also went on to say that he can't play in such environments. The next day we heard that his contract was terminated with Trousonspor. And he also said that he would never go back to playing for them again. He has a two-year contract, a free agent. He has done one year. He remains one more year. And he's no longer playing for the Charleston Sports team in Turkey. And on Thursday, the league was put on hold. Now, who should be faulted? Is it Mikel's fault that he came out to speak? I know, yes, in his contract, he's not supposed to say some kind of things to the media. But was he wrong to call out uh, for attention on the Turkish league? Okay, first of all, I'll take you back to um, an incident that happened before, before uh, the announcement mm -hmm. about the termination of his contract. contract. Um, uh, Charles Bonspo played a game over the weekend where Mikel, Mikel was meant to come on as a substitute. He refused. That was what necessitated a meeting between him and the club president. The club president summoned him and said, come, what are you doing? That was after he posted on his inter Instagram page. Instagram you know, uh, criticizing the Turkish FA and everything. But again, you look at Charles Bonspoor. Charles Bonspoor has not won the title in years. 
they are on top of the league. Exactly. They are looking to get their first silverware in decades. So, and somebody is um, putting up an act of petulance. Mm -hmm. That's what Mikel has done. But again, you look at it, is what he has done justified? Mm -hmm. Perhaps he shouldn't have put it on social media. True. Perhaps he should have just maybe granted interviews to the journalist and said, oh, uh, I'm completely condemning what the Turkish FA and the, and the club are doing in this regard, that they're not putting the health of uh, players yes. first. Now, you have a duty as a player, first of all, uh, as an employee of the club, you have a duty to obey reasonable instructions. Now, part of the reasonable instructions, I would imagine, is putting up such kind of posts on social media. That is wrong. Then on the part of Transborn Sport, there's a duty, there's an implied duty to guarantee the health and safety of your players. players. Now, and that includes ensuring that you don't expose them to a pandemic mm -hmm. like this that is spreading like wildfire all over the world. Now they have done that, they have exposed their players and punished somebody who dared to speak up about it. Now, that is a constructive dismissal. It, uh, something came out the other time when they were saying, oh, that the, his contract was terminated by mutual consent. There's no such thing as, as termination mutual by consent. mutual consent. There's always somebody at, the, at, the, at, the, at one end of the spectrum who is dictating terms and saying, young man, this is what I'm putting on the table for you. If you don't like it, you can, you can go ahead and go. Mm. Now, um, Mikel, from what I heard, was not paid any compensation. Now, if you are saying that he was mutually terminated, the event that, okay, that perhaps Mikel's uh, views were sought as to, okay, uh, where do we go from here? Do you still want to play for the club or not? And he says, I don't want to play for the club. That is not termination. Mikel has not terminated his contract. What happened is a constructive dismissal. Mm. And going by the events of Thursday, where they eventually had to bow down to coronavirus <laughs> by suspending <laughs> the league, yeah. Mikel should take them to CAS. True. Mikel should take them to CAS and seek damages for constructive dismissal. Hmm. His contract was not terminated. Wow. So I, I'm hoping I'm hoping that he takes that line of action just so to um, send a message to most of the clubs because it's not just in Turkey. In Brazil, Grêmio, Grêmio put face masks. The Grêmio players put face masks over the weekend when they were playing playing in the Brazilian uh, Premier uh, Division. Yeah. They put face masks to to protest the decision of the Brazilian FA to expose them to such risk. Hmm. 